what a glorious Lord's Day it is. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and Christ is risen. So celebrate, rejoice. May the Spirit of the Lord be with you today as we worship the Lord, our risen Lord. Please join me in the call to worship. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. This is the good news. God's love never fails. His love endures forever. And we sing the good news in hymn number 194, Christ the Lord is risen today. Would you stand and sing with us?
standing for our prayer of invocation. Lord God, early in the morning when the world was young, you made life in all its beauty. You gave birth to all that we know. Hallowed be your name. Early in the morning, when the world least expected it, a newborn child crying in a manger announced that you had come among us, that you were one of us. Hallowed be your name. name. Early in the morning, surrounded by respectable liars, religious leaders, anxious statesmen, and silent friends, you accepted the penalty for doing good, for being God. You shouldered and suffered the cross. Hallowed be your name. name. Early in the morning, a voice in a guarded graveyard and footsteps in the dew proved that you had risen, that you had come back to those and for those who had forgotten, denied, and executed you. Hallowed be your name. This morning, in the multicolored company of your church on earth and in heaven, we celebrate your creation, your life, your death and resurrection, your love for us, and your redemption of all creation. Hallowed be your name. And I'd like to invite all of the children worshiping with us to come and join me on the front steps for our children's sermon. Excellent. Come on down, guys. Come on, join me. Some people on this side. It's okay to sit on this side of me. Look how pretty. Wow. Come on, more coming. All right. Wow. I love Easter Sunday because with all of the beautiful flowers that we have here and then all of you all looking so nice, you're like a little garden of children. And it's just, aren't they wonderful? It's so good to see you guys. Spring is one of my favorite times because of all the things that bloom in the gardens both the ones in our yards and in the ones in the world as well. And have anybody ever been over to the mountains this time of year and seen all the wildflowers that are there? I like to go every year, and I even brought a picture. Somebody at your class at school in? Well, we went. It was kind of rainy yesterday, but I took a picture last year of some of these flowers. Can you put that up on the screen so everybody else can see it? They were just just as flowers as far as you could see up and down the hillside. And it reminds me of our Bible story today because it's about a garden. And in the story, which you all know, Mary came to the tomb of Jesus on Easter Sunday morning. And of course, she looked in and what did she see? Nothing. Nothing. That's right. The tomb was empty. And it made her very sad because she thought they had moved Jesus' body. And she was crying because she said, where have they taken my Lord's body? They've taken him away and I don't know where he is. And you know what happened? Jesus appeared to her. But guess what? She thought he was the gardener. Do you know what a gardener is? What's a gardener? What, Thomas? Uh, Somebody who does gardening. That's a great answer. (laughs) You're exactly right. Well, can you imagine mistaking Jesus for the gardener, somebody who works out in the yard? What, what do you think a gardener does? Who, who they thinks? In the garden. They do work in the garden. You guys are full of great answers today. Well, let's think. Let's think. A gardener takes care of the plants, don't they? And they do all the things. They plant the seeds. They water the flowers. They harvest them. They make sure they get enough sun. Sometimes they pull the weeds out of the garden so that only the pretty things grow in a garden. And that's what a gardener does. And you know what's funny about that is that Mary thought Jesus was the gardener. And in some ways, I think she may be right. Because Jesus does those things for us. He cares for us. And he loves us. And he gives us things to help us grow. Sometimes he prunes or cuts away the things the parts of our lives that aren't so good. He tries to keep the weeds away from us so that we can grow in the way that we're supposed to grow. And I think it's a really important thing that Mary thought Jesus might be the gardener. In fact, I think Mary was right. 
Jesus is a gardener and we are his flowers. And so we grow up and he takes care of us. Let's have a word of prayer and ask Jesus, thank Jesus for being our gardener. Pray and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our gardener. Thank you for helping us grow. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, we're going to go and sit back with our parents. And so parents, if you don't mind to stand for just a moment to make it a little easier for them to find you, stand up, parents. And we'll make sure everybody gets back to their own (laughs) parents. If they don't, you just be nice to them during the service, okay? And then... The first lesson this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. The Sabbath was over, and it was about daybreak on Sunday, when Mary of Magdala and the other Mary came to look at the grave. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven. He came to the stone and rolled it away and sat himself down on it. His face shone like lightning. His garments were white as snow. And at the sight of him, the guards shook with fear and lay like the dead. The angel then addressed the women. You, he said, have nothing to fear. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised again as he said he would be. Come and see the place where he was laid, and and then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and is going on before you into Galilee. There you will see him. That is what I had to tell you. They hurried away from the tomb in awe and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus was there in their path. He gave them his greeting, and they came up and clasped his feet, falling prostrate before him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brothers that they are to leave for Galilee. They will see me there. The word of the Lord.
Thank you so much, musicians, singers, ringers, players, directors. What a gift they have shared with us this morning. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. O oh, holy God, we come before you this Easter day in profound gratitude. We confess, O oh God, that we, we like to think of Easter as a sunny, warm, a happy day, but we remember that the world in so many places remains a dark and stormy place, sunk deep into the cold winter of sin and evil. We remember that those who first witnessed your son's resurrection found it to be completely terrifying. But you, O oh great God of surprises, you crashed into our reality with something new, something completely unexpected. On this morning, we don't want to forget the darkness of last Friday. Never let us forget the sacrifice, the bloody death, the God-forsaken pain of it all. But today we praise you for all the might, all the power, all the creativity by which you won the victory. We praise you, O oh God, for raising Jesus Christ from the dead. But because we know that darkness still surrounds us, we pray this morning for all people everywhere who continue to feel crucified by a cruel world. So we pray for refugees, we pray for tortured prisoners. We pray for the innocent victims of war and natural disasters. We pray for abused children, for battered women. We pray for families grieving the loss of someone held dear. Lord, we pray for the homeless, the poor. We pray for those victimized by racism, discrimination, and oppression of all kinds. We pray for all those who can see no Easter light because all that is good and lovely has been eclipsed by a depression that simply will not lift, by chronic pain that will not subside, by unemployment with no end in sight, or by a job that is slaying the spirit day by day because the work simply seems so meaningless. Oh Lord, the things that led Jesus to the cross have not yet disappeared from the face of the earth. So many people need Easter to break into their darkness. Help us become your presence to those in need, this Easter Sunday and always. Even here in this congregation, there are too many needs to name. And so we pray for the widow, for the widower who faced their first Easter without the presence of one held so dear. We pray for those who are sick today. We pray for those who are worried about a sick loved one. Lord, be with each of us gathered here for this celebration. Thank you for family, for friends. Thank you for our guests here this morning. Grant them a special blessing by your spirit. And we thank you, Father God, for gracing us with musicians who spend their talents thoughtfully and well in this place so that we may be lifted up and drawn closer to you. But above all, we thank you for the presence of the Spirit of the living Lord, Jesus Christ. As we encounter you here in this hour, may we know for sure that we have indeed been in your sacred presence. And may this encounter embolden us to live an Easter life, not only this day, but in the days to come. Transform us, O oh Lord, we pray, both now and forevermore, as we remember the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A few years ago, I had the privilege of joining Bob and Donna Tapp as they delivered meals from our friendship kitchen to the furthest regions of our county, places I had never been and have never been since. 
And I got to experience firsthand not only the food that helped so many that day, but also the warmth, the love, the joy that it brought. Today's Easter offering, as Marty said, goes in its entirety to our Friendship Kitchen. So I hope that you give generously to support this incredible ministry. May God bless your gift today. We pray that you would bless these gifts to our friendship kitchen. Bless those who prepare the meals. Bless those who deliver the meals. Bless those who receive the meals. Thank you so much for all that you have done, and let this be our service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Maybe see. The second lesson this morning will be read responsively from responsive reading 199 in your hymnal.
Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said that, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said, Teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I am not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. The word of the Lord. Would you stand and sing together hymn number 200 in the garden? We want to be sure that all the children know they are invited to the great community church Easter egg hunt right after the service, and I'm not sure where are they going to gather. In the preschool room, just keep walking in that direction on this level, and you'll find the preschool room, and we invite all the kids to come and take part. 
The story of Mary in the garden is my favorite Easter story. You see, we've all been to that garden where Mary wandered weeping that day. The garden where the weight of the world is suddenly upon us and around our shoulders, where our broken hearts mourn some failure or loss, and where we do not know how or even if we can go on because life has caved in on us. For Dot and her four children, the garden was the garage attached to the house where Dot's husband and the kid's father had a while earlier that day ended his own life. The police escorted the family to the garage on that cold winter morning just a few days before Christmas and told them to stay there while they did their work inside. Dot and her children, like Mary, were in the garden alone. For Russ, the garden was the driver's seat of the brand spanking new family station wagon. As he drove home from work that morning, he had just taken a new job, his dream job, with lots of responsibility and lots more money, thus the shiny new car. What rejoicing there had been among Russ's family and friends when he landed that job, but now he was driving home with a pink slip clutched in his hand. The aerospace company that had hired him had had a falling off of business, and he was new to the company and low on the totem pole and one of the first to be let go. How would he tell his wife? How would he tell his family? How would he pay for his new car and the mortgage and... He was in the garden alone. For me, the garden was the musty pitch blackness of the cellar to which my mother had herded my sister, brother, and myself as the great Worcester, Massachusetts tornado of 1953 roared through our city, our very neighborhood, leaving many dead and thousands homeless. As the storm swirled all around us and electrical transformers exploded outside, my mother told us children that if we got split up, we should meet at the throne of Jesus. I was just four years old the first time I remember being in the garden. We've all been to that garden alone. Illness, divorce, injustice, addiction, Rejection, the death of a loved one, being bullied at school, losing the joy of life. Do you remember how you felt on 9-11 or on December 7th, 1941? Or that famous date in your life when nothing made sense anymore and your life started spinning out of control? We've all been to the garden alone. And before our lives are over, we will go to that garden again and again and again. Today, Mary is in the garden alone. And something amazing happens. The risen Jesus comes to Mary. And he is a gardener. Have you ever noticed that about the Easter stories. When the risen Jesus encounters the disciples, he is never the Jesus they are looking for or even the Jesus they remember. He appears as a gardener to Mary. On the road to Emmaus, he is just a fellow traveler who comes walking along the two disciples as they travel. Out at the Sea of Galilee, he is a beachcomber in the distance starting a campfire on the shore. And the followers of Jesus do not recognize him at first because, well, because he is just somebody who shows up. Sir, Mary sobs, they have taken away my Lord and I know not where they have laid him. If you know where he is, tell me and I will get him. And then the gardener says, Mary. And her eyes or her heart Or her soul, or maybe all three together are opened and she recognizes him. 
Rabbi, she exclaims, tears of joy streaming down her cheeks. And then comes what I think is the most interesting part of the whole story. Mary, in her joy of discovering Jesus alive, starts to throw her arms about his shoulders only to hear Jesus say, no, do not hold on to me. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. You see, Jesus is not someone you can hold on to and make a memory of or a monument to or a holiday for. No, Jesus is alive, and Jesus has more work yet to do. And now, so does Mary. Mary has a mission. Jesus tells her to go and tell her story. And here it is in a nutshell. When you, whoever you are, come to the garden alone, life turned topsy-turvy, suffering the pain of loss or experiencing the hatred, violence, and injustice of a world gone wrong, disappointed by weakness, failure, and betrayal, captured by the destructive power of sin, hungering and thirsting for God to make you and the world around you whole, he comes to you. He comes to the garden. Sometimes as a gardener or a fellow traveler along life's road or a stranger on the seashore, sometimes it comes as a whisper in the quiet of the night or as a beautiful beam of color through a stained glass window or through the lyric of a beautiful hymn, or in the silence of a prayer. Sometimes he comes as a martyr with a dream that his and other children will one day be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the character of their, uh, by the content of their character. Or as a teacher who tells you she believes in you and sets you free to become all that God created you to be. Sometimes he comes as a church that dares to stand with the poor and dispossessed of the world and works hard to affirm the dignity of all God's children, no matter who, no matter where, no matter what. A church that practices God loves you, no ifs, ands, ors, or buts about it. Oh, whenever you come to the garden alone, he comes. Sometimes as a child crawling into your lap and kissing your cheek and whispering, you, whispering, I love you for no reason at all. Sometimes as a mother telling her children that everything will be okay and if we are separated, we'll meet at the throne of Jesus. Mary cannot hold onto Jesus because he has others to go to and she has this story to tell about the time she met the risen Christ and he was a gardener. You never know where Jesus will show up next or how he will come to you. But from Mary and all the others, we do know what Jesus wants us all to know. He is somebody who shows up. And when he shows up in people's lives, they are transformed. That's what happened to Mary and to Peter and to James and John and all the others when the risen Christ encountered them, they became stronger and braver and more loving and filled with a spirit of mission that drives them to go and make wrong things right and broken things whole and lost things found and to proclaim the good news of God's love for everyone. When Jesus comes, they become like that old violin I love to tell the story about in Myra Brooks Welch's famous poem. It was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it hardly worth his while to waste his time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bid, good people, he cried. Who starts the bidding for me? One dollar, one dollar, do I hear two? Two dollars, who'll make it three? 
Three dollars once, three dollars twice, going for three. But no, from the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening up the strings, he played a melody, pure and sweet, as sweet as the angels sing. The music ceased, and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, What now am I bid for this old violin as he held it aloft with its bow? One thousand, one thousand, do I hear two? Two thousand, who'll make it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, going and gone, said he. The audience cheered, but some of them cried, We just don't understand. What changed its worth? Swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune, all battered with bourbon and gin, is auctioned cheap to a thoughtless crowd, much like that old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He's going once, he's going twice, he's going and almost gone. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. Today, on our last Easter together in this beautiful sanctuary garden, I pray for you, each and every one, the touch of the master's hand. And the discovery that in all the gardens into which you come alone, you are never, never alone. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 205, Christ is Alive. Would you stand as we sing together, please? Please join me as we pray together the prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Lord, 
make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Lord, make me, even me, an instrument of your peace. Amen. And now as you go, go knowing that you are never alone, but the presence of God in Christ is always with you. Go in goodness, go in grace, go in peace, go in the power of the resurrection. Amen. Thank you.